today i'll be taking a few minutes to tell you about our enterprise architecture project it is a project right now but it is a project to build up uh, an enterprise architecture for the indian railways which will enable us to manage the information systems of the railways as we go along and as we uh, go into the future so indian railways as you know is a uh, is a very large and complex organization and in this organization there are a very large number of individual information systems that have developed over the years so today we have many applications which are talking to each other but there is a need to have a more planned integration and that planned integration brings a lot of value to the organization so we have embarked on this enterprise architecture journey and we have embarked on this and that is how we have uh, also been using some of wso2's systems here so how has this started it has started because of a change in our environment the environment in which the indian railways find itself in which because of economic development across the world and in in all countries there is a need for change and that change has uh, come to railways also and here you can see what are the priorities that are driving this whole effort and better passenger experience bigger freight market share because railways is an efficient mode of transportation optimizing our operations managing our assets better better financial control upgrading the skills of our employees to meet the needs of tomorrow and then some structural changes increased private sector maturity and therefore participation and then corporatization all of these are 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 uh, agents of change and these are what are actually driving us to make our information systems more mature and in the middle here you will see working with partner organizations so this is one of the very important uh, efforts now that we have is that we are able to participate in a national logistics ecosystem so that the entire logistics scenario becomes more efficient costs get reduced uh, everybody all the, the citizens and all our customers benefit from a situation where our national logistics ecosystem takes root and enables logistics to become a efficient uh, logistics system so that is really the root of what we are doing now and now just a little bit on how we are looking at offering services services are a combination of the demands of the customers and the organizational capabilities that we have once to 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 meet a demand we have to have the capability to offer those services and hence as you can see now whatever existing systems we have whatever existing services we have been offering because of our of the systems that we have been following till now they have to be linked to a future vision which is based on the demands that we expect from the customer further down the line in the future and then there are many enabling technologies that are available so we take those technologies we take our future vision and we convert them into new capabilities and we develop those capabilities and those capabilities coupled with the demands and the new technologies and our vision enable us to give technology enabled services which is actually the transformation that we are looking at which is a technology led transformation 
Now, this is a little abstract. So, to give you a little background, Indian Railways, as many of you will be knowing, is a very large transporter, government-owned. It runs across the Indian subcontinent, across the country. And there are both freight and passenger services that are offered by Indian Railways. A lot of the traffic, much of the traffic uh, of freight, we, we carry all the bulk freight, for example, coal, oil, cement, steel. These are some of the commodities that are almost exclusively carried by rail. If the lead is over 500 kilometers. So if you want to carry coal for more than 500 kilometers, you'd prefer to haul it by rail. And that is the situation where we are now. We also have short distance and long distance passenger movements. So any movement that is any any passenger who wants to travel more than 500 kilometers and who is not able to afford air transport or he finds that it, such a short journey is not worth going by air, then that passenger normally prefers train. So so we have a lot of uh, passenger, uh, passengers also taking our train services. So railway services are all pervasive. The second thing is that we have a fully vertically integrated system. We, it, is, it is a large system. We do, we even manufacture our own locomotives. We manufacture our own coaches. And uh, by coaches, I mean passenger, passenger coaches. And we also maintain and manage them. We maintain and manage our track. So it is a very, very large system that is in place. And information that flows across the organization is very, very important in keeping this system running effectively and efficiently. Naturally, now you cannot have information moving manually. So it, it, has, it, it is an automated system. It is a computerized system. And this computerization started in the year 1967, actually. So we are, we are old. Uh, very one of the very initial uh, users of uh, IT in the Indian subcontinent. And then over the years, we moved into freight management and passenger ticketing. And then as you can see, this is a kind of timeline. We also, as I said, we have maintenance facilities. So we had systems to uh, computerize systems in our workshops. And we had uh, ticketing systems that we developed Sometime in 1985, we started our first ticketing system, computerized ticketing. That became a big hit. So, and, and it was one of the very, very major uh, IT initiatives in the country at the time. And so on. So this is showing you till where we were in 2008, which was a comparatively simple uh, time. But by 2008, 2009, we found that we had a very large number of IT systems. I am not going to go, of course, into the details of this. But suffice it to say that we had a large number of IT systems and they, we were finding it difficult to communicate across these systems. They were, they were independent, but information interchange was becoming an increasingly difficult exercise. And then Post uh, 1900 and uh, just hang on, sorry. Huh. And then post that, post 1900 and uh, 2009 was the period of expansion and integration when more and more functions of the Indian Railways came under this regime. And uh, we had to start interchanging data across these systems. So we built a lot of uh, enabling um, interfaces amongst these systems. Fortunately, technology had also matured to the extent that building these, uh, these links, building these interchanging uh, interchanges became easier. So now we started to have limited integrated flows. For example, for our vendors, for our suppliers, the entire procurement was done online. And then after uh, the procurement, their payments are also online. So the entire flow of information is automated. 
for contractors who are constructing uh, railway lines for them also now increasingly their entire flow of uh, their progress of their work being monitored and they being paid for their work all that is uh, coming online but again as i said if you see on the left you can have the best systems in place here buildings represent individual it systems but if you don't integrate them properly you may not have a well planned city whereas if you have an enterprise architecture in place and that is the role of the enterprise architecture you can build the foundations for a planned city in the same way you can have a foundation for your information system which is a planned information system so that is why we decided to go in for an enterprise architecture initiative now when we say enterprise architecture what exactly do we mean we are looking at the business at the it applications we are looking at the data architecture technology architecture so these are it is a layered approach they are viewpoints so when you are looking at information systems how do you define them so you have to define them in these four layers on the right if you see there are these uh, the, the the frameworks that define some part of the system security integration performance performance is very important how are these information systems performing are they leading to preferred outcomes all that you have to measure so you have to have a performance measuring system in place and then the last part is the governance part where you are able to govern you are able to manage your entire enterprise architecture effort itself this uh, as you can see here there is uh, what is known as the india enterprise architecture framework that has been uh, developed by the ministry of it in india and we are following that so so our enterprise architecture is based on the india enterprise architecture framework it is called indaf so we hope that we'll move from where we are right now that is business processes uh, business processes are automated but across departmental boundaries information is not flowing smoothly applications we have a lot of discrete applications which are addressing specific functions by applications i mean it applications data again there is no common dictionary so far each application has its own database the databases may be comprehensive as far as that function is concerned but when we look at relationships across functions for example when you are looking at a station a railway station a railway station has many perspectives it is also a place where commercial activities take place you sell tickets you book parcels at a railway station also the railway station has is a civil engineering unit because it is a building it requires to be repaired it has to be extended sometimes some parts of it have to be remodeled and redesigned so both of them are data entities in their own right which are stored in individual applications but then consistency across these uh, data entities has to be managed and that is where the enterprise architecture comes in and same with technology of course we want to move to cloud so how do we do that in a planned manner security instead of individual data centers uh, being secured how do we take an overview of the security so this is the target that we are looking for that is end to end processes instead of departmental processes applications loosely coupled but unified onto a single it platform loosely coupled so that you can make changes when you want service based so that you can call services from one application to the other and not have to bother about the internals of the application that you are calling data again standard data definitions which is uh, which is something that we find is very very important now having a unified database of the metadata so to say to have a common data catalog and then being able to harness latest technology platforms being able to harness latest development methodologies so that we can reach a stage where we can quickly 
transform ourselves we are agile and we can make the changes required from our systems quickly and efficiently security i think uh, all of us uh, are, are very clear that security is very very important it depends on the threat landscape that is prevalent but you have to be able to react very quickly to that threat landscape you cannot wait you know you have these zero day attacks and all these kind of things if your security system is not able to respond in time then it is as bad as not really having a security system at all that is the situation right now and integration here you will see uh, that we are looking at integration not only within the systems of the organization but also being able to integrate our applications with our partner organizations which is what the first slide i had shown you the partner organizations have become important because now we are no longer looking at railways just railways we are looking at railways as a part of the logistics ecosystem of the country right governance i have already touched on okay so what are these vistar our project vistar vistar is our project for developing the enterprise architecture for the railways what are the deliverables that we'll have we will have a set of blueprints blueprints will be describing the current architecture what are our current information systems what are our current current business processes how do they map to the information systems right now we don't have all of that in one place with a blueprint in place a current blueprint you know exactly what you have where the gaps are then you have a target so you have to have a vision and you have to be able to articulate that vision so articulate that vision create a target architecture and then you have a set of gaps that you can fill you know where you are you know where you want to be those gaps you fill through a road map and a road map is a set of projects that you define which are consistent with each other and which allow you to reach your target architecture state along with that you will have to we have already started developing some rules principles so that you have a consistent approach to all your uh, all all the developments that you do and then of course a governance structure to ensure that this whole thing stays on track and it doesn't flounder as the days pass in order to ensure that we have the right tools to get us to our target state we have some sub projects we call them sub projects which they are basically aimed at creating an enabling environment for the information systems of the railways for example an application portfolio management system we have uh, it installed we call it paridrishya paridrishya is a application portfolio management system which at a glance tells us what our applications are what is what are the functionalities that they cover what is it how far are they from maturity and fruition are they giving the outcomes that we require and desire and then we have uh, our open api our api gateway api management system in which we have just published some of the first few apis which we call pravah pravah is flow flow in sanskrit so we call it pravah and then we have some other uh, enabling uh, uh, things that are there for example application monitoring system and enterprise data dictionary and all those are still in the exploratory phase but we hope that within the next one or two years this entire suite of enabling technologies will be ready and the main work of uh, blueprinting and uh, roadmap generation has uh, started now we have uh, selected some of the best consultants also so that we get a knowledge base we are consulting with some of the best uh, most experienced advisors in the country and we hope that maybe 12 months down the line we'll have a much more mature architecture in place so end to end logistics as i said now where is all this fitting into in the logistics uh, ecosystem the thing is that we need these end to end logistics is the aim 
and end to end logistics is increasingly uh, uh, it is it is no longer a nice to have thing it is a it is an essential so let us look at what we have right now what normally we had conventionally we had an origin and destination we had a consignment tracking system we had accounting systems which are linked we had e payment gateways uh, about four or five years ba back we were in this situation and we used to give a portal interface to our customers so the customers were given a portal they could log in on the web and then they could see whatever they wanted to they could track their consignments and they could see how their consignments were moving across the system and they were quite happy but not for long because then the consigners started developing their own applications and now they did not want to a man to sit and look at a portal what they wanted to do was that their it systems should link to our it systems their it system should give a e forwarding note to us check the rake and uh, wagon availability a rake is a set of wagons so be able to check the wagon availability be able to send an advance shipping notification and be able to make the payments automatically without any human intervention banks also wanted now that the e payment should go seamlessly to the bank without any human intervention no checks and then taxes which were normally paid at the end of the at the end of a period it was a monthly reconciliation the tax department there were checks flowing up and down now all that has changed and now indirect tax department they they have they have uh, they need to directly link into our system and we built these um, services for them similarly at the receiving end the consignee can be a distributor can be an aggregator can be a transporter now can be an agent all of them would like their it systems to talk to us again now they want us to give them an advance shipping notification and they 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 want to take delivery automatically electronically they don't want any human intervention there and track and trace they want that to be done through their systems nobody wants to see it their system will throw up when their consignment is getting delayed they don't want a person to be looking at a portal and all of this is possible only through apis so now increasingly we have apis with our consigners apis with our consignees apis with our banks and that brings us to let us look at some of the partner organizations that we have and you can see the wide variety and the diversity of these partners we have producers and consumers on one side manufacturers producers oil power steel cement we have uh, wholesalers we have uh, retail chains all of these are producers and consumers of information and producers and consumers of goods so both of them they need information information precedes their uh, consignments information also follows their consignments so that information is as important as the consignment to ensure that efficiency is built into the whole system then we have transporters we have trade trade facilities ports inland container depots bonded warehouses logistics parks all of these because now we are looking at logistics for export for domestic for both types of traffic and then increasingly we have these logistics players aggregators 3pl uh, the, the, the third party logistics providers we call them 3pl providers couriers department of posts all of them have now it systems in place so there's a big diversity and if you see here we have taken these uh, baby steps now to ensure that 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 linkage is uh, in place for example we have uh, we, we have built a portal from which services can be taken and increasingly this will all these services will form part of our api catalog because we are building up an api catalog now with pravah 
Pravah will provide an API catalog. And all of these services that we are offering to them individually through individual uh, information services, they will move to our API catalog. Apart from freight, there is also passenger. And passenger traffic is the travel part of it. So travel also transporters, airlines, bus services, metro systems, taxi operators, even informal transport. Informal transport in some of the smaller cities, in, in uh, smaller towns in India, even some large towns, outlying areas, you have informal transport. You have these cycle rickshaws or you have uh, small three-wheeled autos. Now, these operators are independent operators. But now, through their mobile devices, they have access to centralized information systems. So these are people whom we want to tap now. Why should we leave out this person who, who, who pedals a cycle rickshaw? He has a mobile phone. He can be part of our entire travel ecosystem. He is part of it. right? Similarly, hospitality tools, to tour operators, hotels, exhibitions, event managers, travel facilitators, online travel portals, all of them require information regarding passenger traffic, passenger movement. What is the uh, expected time of arrival of, of, of trains? What is the expected time of departure of trains? What are the facility offered uh, facilities offered in the trains? What are facilities offered in the stations? All of these are things that are required by all of these stakeholders. And of course, uh, tourism ministry, health ministry now, as, as you have seen, because of COVID, health in the transportation system has become so important. Monitoring the health, making sure people are vaccinated, making sure people are tested. All of that is linked. Security agencies. Security is one big thing that we have. So as I said, Pravah is our API gateway. And uh, APIs are, we have found, are a very powerful catalyst for digital transformation. And an API ecosystem allows a lot of, uh, you know, it allows very good collaboration in the ecosystem. So this is what we have put in place. In fact, this is where we have been uh, in. We have been collaborating with the WSO2. We are in. In it's not been an easy job to put in an API gateway for such a complex system. We are still grappling with some of the details. And uh, yes, we are looking for a lot of support from WSO2, and we are getting some of it. But certainly, we can do with all the help that we can get, because. As you can see, it's a very complex system. Here, what, what you can see is, if you look at the bottom layer here, you can see that there are a very large number of applications that we have even now. All of them are integrated through an enterprise application integration system. It moves through a set of common gateways and portals to provide different types of services. Like we have a GIS portal, we have a web portal. We have payment gateways. And now we have this API gateway becoming more and more important. right? And it has to move through a secure system, secure, uh, secure zones, perimeter security, and then move to, if you come to the top of this thing, you can see that there are many, many ways of accessing the information through mobile devices, through thin clients, browsers, of course, displays. And look at the variety of users, their logistics partners, freight customers, passengers, suppliers, government agencies. And not the least on the right, if you see, is the new wave of embedded devices and IoTs coming in, which is creating a lot of uh, information um, that has to find its way into these central systems. All of it has to be managed through a multi-layer security wall to, to keep out uh, malicious traffic. The left is, is another difficult part, which is this unstructured data that comes through social media, sentiment analysis, and all of that you have to manage through your, uh, and then be able to analyze it in your analytics and AI system. 
So this is the, and you can see that uh, the API uh, gateway forms almost the heart of the system now. So the API gateway is very important for us and very important for the Indian railways going forward. So this is uh, what uh, I had to say. If we do our planning right, we can move from our plans to a realization of our plans. As you can see on the right, this is a planned city. All cities are not planned, but if you do it right, you can have a planned cities the same way. If you plan your information systems right, perhaps you will get better outcomes, you will get more efficiencies, and you will get much more value from your information systems. That is why we have embarked on this whole exercise. And again, as I said, APIs are going to become almost the backbone. And that is how we got in touch with WSO2. And that is where we expect WSO2 to support us. Please understand that this is a very, very, very critical system. And this is a, a very complex system. <laughs> Thank you very much.